Welcome to the kingdom. So we deal with, again, how to be a Christ-like believer. We've talked about the temptation piece, but how do we deal with the sin? How do we deal with the sin? Well, first and foremost, when it comes to dealing with sin, you got to understand you can't let sin control your life. Like when, when I say that, meaning like you can't allow the things that go on in this world to dictate how you're going to be in Christ, you know, because we're all going to sin and fall short to the glory. Yeah, but exactly. Here's the thing. It's a difference between committing a sin and being repentant of it, repenting, asking God's forgiveness, and putting your best foot forward to not repeat it again because mm -hmm. at some point it's going to become a habit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when we have to understand is how to deal with sin to where it doesn't become a habit, mm -hmm. where it's just an ongoing thing to where now we become numb to it. Yeah. Now we become immune to it. Yeah. Now we just like, okay, well. Right. So it's we like become comfortable in sin. Yeah. And and I don't believe in and you you tell me what your beliefs is here. I don't believe you can be a Christian and be comfortable living in sin. Absolutely not. If you You'll are then you need you might want to do a little soul searching and do some checking <laughs> right. because because a, a real Christian cannot comfortably mm -mm. live in sin. No, cuz see here's the thing. Darkness and light don't 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 there mesh well in the same area. So right. If, if God, who is of light, is in you, mm -hmm. then the ways of this world, Satan and all of that, that's of darkness, they can't coexist. That's they right. can't They can't stay in here. And that's there's right. something in here that's right. That's going to cause you to say, man, this ain't right. Yeah, you go. There you man, go. I got to do better. Yeah. And it's always that little soft voice because we, we got this, this crazy thought of that God is like the stern voice that we hear. It's just loud and you know, right. you no, know, no. A sweet, subtle now voice, and what? And one thing I'm gonna tell you that I know from experience: God don't do a whole bunch of talking. He, he's very, yeah. That's not right. That's it. You know. Yeah, these long conversations. You one sinless person. He gonna say what he can say, and that's it. You gonna be like, well, wait a minute, God, you good. know. And, and and he gonna and there's gonna be a feeling of conviction. And if you don't feel wrong in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because it's 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 the difference. Uh, the way I I, I had it under, uh, taught to us, God son is when it comes to a Christian, it's the difference between having a having the nature of a hog versus the nature of a sheep. This mm -hmm. is how a preacher just explained it to us. He said, "What do you mean by the nature of a hog and the nature of a sheep? We're talking about temptation of living in sin." Mm -hmm. He said, "Say what well, the nature of a hog is. You could pull that hog." Mm -hmm. uh, wash it up, mm -hmm. put a big bow on his neck, mm -hmm. spray some cologne on it, mm -hmm. right? And time you let him go, guess where he's going? Right back in that pit. Back to that mud, man. He's mm -hmm. going back to the because that's where hogs are comfortable at mm -hmm. in mud. He said, now a sheep, if you take a sheep, wash it up, clean it up. Not that it won't fall in the mud again or in mess or in slop. Mm -hmm. But a sheep ain't looking for no slop. A mm -hmm. sheep ain't looking for it. They trying to avoid it. You know what I mean? But they can from time to time. Man, that helped me so much. He says, it's the difference between having the nature of a hog mm -hmm. that's comfortable in sin or mud. Mm -hmm. That's like the wallowing. It just, that's just the way. That, and he says, you can pull him out, clean him up, wash him up, spray, spray perfume on him, put a bow tie on him. He mm -hmm. said, time you let him go. Mm -hmm. He's going right back to that, back to that uh, mud. But it's not so with a sheep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So when you're saying that the temptation, uh, the temptation that comes with us and whether or not we're uh, comfortable in sin, I agree with you 110% that because it's not that God is not saying that we don't sin. That's a lie. No. And anybody that try to convince you of that, it's a lie. That's why First John says, my little children, First John chapter 2, my little children, I write these things unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And if we confess our sins, is what it says. You know what I mean? So a lot of times when these people even try to put on us about that Christians don't sin, no, Christians don't live in sin. Big difference. It's not that Christians don't sin. Christians don't practice or live in sin. See, First John says, he that knoweth God sinneth not. That word sinneth there means continual. Mm. It's continual sinning, mm -hmm. you know? And see, I had to learn all that, man, because when I first was exposed to Christianity, I was exposed to a doctrine 
that man emphasized that you had to be perfect. You know what I mean? Like you never sin. And, I'm, and we are not telling Christians it's okay to sin. No, just be clear on that. Just want to be clear on that. Clear on that. Because see again, we're just saying don't make it a habit. Right, right. (laughs) We're we're saying that Christians don't make it a habit of sinning. That's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. That Christians don't make it a habit of sinning. We're not saying before some the the other the the, the Pharisaical spirit can get to tune in Mm -hmm. and say, see, see, Mm -hmm. look at that preacher and his godson. Mm -hmm. They they telling these people they can sin. We are not saying that you can sin because if you really love Jesus. For real, like I like to say, you don't want to sin, but you are capable of still sinning. You are capable of still sinning, but you cannot tell me you love Jesus and you're still living habitually in sin. That's the point that we're making. You know what I mean?